to that is going to be speed up very fast. Okay, celebration of victory. Lord, I just thank you, Holy Spirit, that you are the Spirit of God and that you are the greatest teacher and revealer of truth. Think through my mind and speak through my mouth, Holy Spirit, as I yield to you. Let your good words go forth, not in my own human wisdom, but in demonstration of your spirit and your power, that the faith of your people will rest in you and your power. In Jesus' name. Amen. Okay, today, celebration of victory. All right? For the hour is come. There's a verse inside here. All right, we worship the Lord in spirit. And in truth, time today that who, who, what Jesus said this, he said this is God is seeking for people to worship him. All right. So our idea of worship have always been just sing song. <laughs> All right. But there's a bigger meaning to it. All right. And uh, as we go along. Okay. So that means we can only come to him. All right. Whether it's in song or uh, uh, our daily life. Right. It's coming to him, all right? Adoring him, giving honor to him, the great I am. So why do we celebrate, all right? Celebrate if, uh, before the end of this uh, uh, sermon today, right? I trust you understand by the Holy Spirit what this wonderful key is, right? To pour the, the fire and the cooking <laughs> to be done, all right? So by the end of uh, this session, Y'all should be cooked already. <laughs> to be served. To be served to the world. All right. Psalm 122, verse 1 to 9 verse. Yes. I was overjoyed when they said, let's go up to the house of the Lord. And now at last we stand here inside the very gates of Jerusalem. All right. Here's the psalmist. Right. When we come to the house of the Lord, he said, he's overjoyed. All right. King David is famous for his worship, right? That he, he, you know, when the spirit of the Lord <laughs> came upon him, right? We will dance like David dance. Why? Because David worshiped the Lord, right? Like uh, Elisha, not scared what people think and how you look, right? Joan, I remember the last Holy Spirit power piece, right? He really desired that anointing that fell upon Sister Joan. He really wanted it. And I believe you got it, Elisha. All right, next week is coming, right, for physical meeting, okay? Yes, be ready, because why are all this? It's not just some emotion thing, all right? The anointing, right? When God pulls down that anointing, it shakes everything that needs to be shaken. <laughs> all our self-consciousness and everything that they have been stuck there for years, all right? Blockages here, blockage there, you know, in the physical body, we call it blood clot. Uh. <laughs> okay, spiritual blood clot. <laughs> all stuck here, stuck there, you know? For the fullness to be released, yeah? It's done a work of the Holy Spirit plus the Word. First, the Holy Spirit do the work, take away all the blockages, and then the Word can come in. Because a lot of people cannot understand the word, <laughs> right? When the Holy Spirit comes, uh, don't go into another uh, dimension, <laughs> another realm, okay? So this is where he's starting the fire, all right? To burn at the end, it's burning only God's love. Agape, unconditional. God's love, God's power in us and through us. So, coming into the presence of God, David said, I am overjoyed. Not only joyful, overjoyful. Okay, but each one has a desire. If you, if you don't want, God won't give. <laughs> right? The desire for the joy, the desire for the anointing. Okay, that is supernatural. Okay, when you want it, Holy Spirit give you. Okay, if we don't want it, we will just look at the other person. <laughs> and why we don't want? Because of all the self-consciousness. Right? And if you are tired of living your Christian life so many years, being so self-conscious, being so timid and fearful, yeah, today, good news. The Holy Spirit can solve that problem for you. <laughs> but we must be willing right, to let it go. Never mind, just close your eyes. Nobody see. You see no one, no one see you. <laughs> okay? Close your eyes and let the Holy Spirit, you see, that's why, uh, you know, operation in the hospital, you have to give you, before the doctor, surgeon operate, they give you what? 
<laughs> anesthetic, right? So that you will not be conscious of what is happening okay, in your body or around you. So the anesthetic Holy Spirit give you under the power, drop first. <laughs> okay, only conscious of him. And if under the anesthetic, right, then the Holy Spirit, like the surgeon, a spiritual surgeon, begin to do operation in your life, cut out all those blood clots, take out all those hindrances in your life, right? That has been there for umpteen years. Okay, and then after that, sew you back <laughs> up so that you can now. Be whole and heal, right? To be Jesus' hands and feet to the world, right? Okay, so overjoyed going to the house of the Lord, right? So it's not necessarily a physical building, right? It is the presence of God is where two or three are gathered there, but inside the gates of Jerusalem, all right? So at that time for the Jews, the, 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 the meaning is inside. If you're outside, <laughs> can you receive everything that's inside? There's a door that is blocking, right? So we come in, into the presence of God, into the holy of holies. Don't just go around the outer court, all right? Where we just trying to praise God. No, go into the presence of God where His glory comes down, yeah? And you will experience something you never experienced before. Okay, all Jerusalem, you were built as a city of praise where God and man mingle together. See, God's heart is to mingle with man. God created Adam and Eve for that purpose. God created you for that purpose. Each one of you. Ah, Sarah, Caleb, Rose family. All of you. Why did God create you? Why were you born? So that God can mingle with you. God can fellowship with you. Yeah? All right? So there, inside. Not outside. Inside. Okay? Inside his presence. All right? We are a city of praise. Jerusalem, God's people, praise to worship God. Praise Him. Have you ever praised somebody before? <laughs> How you pray? You are very clever. <laughs> you are so handsome. You are so beautiful, my dear wife. Then the wife will say, better you don't say anything. Your <laughs> yeah. Yeah. expression doesn't jive <laughs> right with your words. Okay. Praise, but it comes from the heart. Yeah, that's why we develop the heart. When the heart is full, right, with the knowledge of God, revelation of who he is living inside you, praises come out automatically. Then your worship leader and whoever will have, won't have to say, praise God, people. <laughs> he himself or she herself also feel very difficult to praise. <laughs> right? So this is where the, the spiritual life is a natural yeah, it all comes from where? Inside you. Inside the spirit man that was born again. That heart, the garden where the seeds are sown and the flowers grow, the plants grow. It's natural. You don't have to uh, tell the, the flower, but open. <laughs> right? It opens when there's nourishment. Automatically, God created the flower to bloom by itself. Right? But if you try to help the flower to bloom, they break already, the petal. Right? God's creation. We are all God's creation. Today, new creation in Christ. Right? We don't have to be forced to bloom. Okay? Only thing is, the spirit man just need to grow. And then it will bloom all the way. Beautiful unto Jesus. So, come and worship him. Where thrones have been established to rule in righteousness, pray and seek for Jerusalem's peace. For all who love her, will prosper. As I've been sharing with you, right, all my life in ministry, ministry means a pastoring church, right, where I was not really crazy over <laughs> Jerusalem. Okay, there are some who are, and I always feel, I don't, I don't, uh, you know, put them down or whatever, but it's just like, well, you know, that's the Jews. And I don't really follow that. They must, all, must uh, pray for Jerusalem all the time. But then, recently, God, Holy Spirit, has been speaking to me about the Jews, all right, about Jerusalem. And I think it's, it's a time, it's a season because we are closing, you know, the time of the Gentiles is coming to a close, you know, and it is, uh, God is going to turn his eyes back on the Jews. But these few years, or some years, right, it's still his eyes 
his grace is still on the Gentiles. That's why we had to go out and preach already. Because after that, no more, right? It will be more on the Jews because the whole church, those believers will be caught up in what we call the rapture. Yeah. So as the Lord began to speak to me about Jews, about Jerusalem, about the Israelites, you know, the children of God. Okay, not so much as uh, um, try to be like them or what, but teaching the people of God, the new creation, that the God of the Jews is also our God. Yeah, he never changed. Yeah, Jesus is the same yesterday, today and forever. But we never saw Jesus in the Old Testament, in the Jews, because he was not yet uh, manifested that time. So the people today, their eyes, spiritual eyes closed by the devil to the true God, who is our God. Yes, we see Jesus, salvation, and then we have church and all that. But seems to be the power is not there. The God of the Jews, for them, they see a God powerful. Miracles, signs and wonders. That was their heritage, their history. And today, it's more knowledge <laughs> in, the, in the church of today, right? Because we are in the Greek, the Greek state knowledge, right? And sadly, that is what we have, but we need to have both. Both, right? The revelation knowledge of who Jesus is and who you are in Christ as a new creation, all right? That's why your body can be strong and healthy, right? And as well as your God is powerful, as powerful as the God of the Jews. Because to every Jew, they are very proud of their God, <laughs> right? They know their God is powerful. Look at their history, right? So it's the same God, yeah? And God has said in his Bible certain things, all right, for us to learn, okay, from there. That's why God gave Abraham that powerful blessing and promise of what you will inherit this earth, right? That's why the Jews are rich, not by because they are, uh, you know, they are, they, are, they are so smart or whatever. Actually, God made them smart, right? But because of their God's covenant and promise with Abraham. And today we have, we are also children of Abraham by faith. Okay? That means whatever Abraham's children receive by faith, all right, from their God, we also have. Yeah? And much more, <laughs> and much more, but we don't even have the much more. And although you realize the much more, I don't even have the less. <laughs> Both of them don't have. See how the devil has removed all this from the church, from the believers, right? They become like um, mm. paupers when today we are so rich in Christ, as rich as the Jewish people were in that, in that time and today also. Right, because everything that's happening in Jerusalem in the world today is just fulfillment of prophecy. But God said, so it's really almost done. <laughs> As I said again and again, it's going to wrap up. That's why God wrapped y'all here <laughs> so that we don't just end like that. Okay, but you also fulfill your destiny. All right, Sarah, Sarah, Harin, Caleb. Right, God has a purpose, and all most of you have. Uh, a sense of uh, destiny or purpose. Just don't know where. <laughs> where you're going in this world. A bit lost. Okay, The moment you are born again, God put destiny inside your spirit, not your mind. Okay, So if you don't develop this spirit, that's why the mind led away by the world. Where Satan is still ruling for the time being. Okay, To lead people astray in their minds. But here, our spirit got saved to bring us back to our initial calling and destiny, right? To serve the Lord, but not with our own ability. So here, every one of you know by accident, and there's many more that God is going to bring in. There are many more souls. Some non haven't received the Lord, some received the Lord, but no direction in life, yeah? So that's why uh, uh, Marian has the, the verse today, right? When you have... God's word inside your heart, right? It will determine the course of your life, right? So it's so important to guard that heart, right? Because whatever you put inside your heart or your mind in the world, right? It will di direct your direction. The, the, if you listen to the world that says, okay, this is the way, all right, to get success, to get money or whatever. Or another one may say, okay, just uh, 
uh, focus on relationship, your family. So we will always be family conscious. The other one will always be money conscious. Every area. But it is in God's word, in God's church, is where you can God conscious and you have everything. <laughs> you have relationship, you have money, you have health. Okay, so everything is in God. Okay, that's where we come to learn and grow the spirit man. So Jerusalem, the Bible says, right? When you pray for Jerusalem, for the peace of Jerusalem, you will prosper. All right, it's another aspect of God's prospering his people, those who are Jews or Gentiles, which we were before. If you don't get into just the world news and then you read, oh, okay, okay, Jerusalem, you know, there's always war there, there's always, and then you join the, the crowd in the world, okay, to just follow the news and comment. But we are different. We are God's people. When we hear, we have about Jerusalem or, or, or Israel, what do we do? We pray for Israel. We pray in our heart, Lord, bless them. They are God's people. They are special to God. God chose them. And we are the by grace one. <laughs> because of it's by grace. We don't deserve it. Gentiles have no covenant, have no right to what the Jews have. That's why we so thank God. Because if not for grace, God's grace, none of us will ever you know, deserve or ever enter into God's blessing, whether heaven or on this earth. But because of God, Jesus, the grace of God, reached out to the Gentiles. But for the Jews, we're very different. So it's okay. Don't mind their arrogance. <laughs> yeah, if you if you right, you know your legal legal right. You have your daughter of a, a king, you know, and your father owns everything and everything. You also will be, but but th then you have every right to be arrogant, <laughs> good arrogant. Yeah, exactly. That's my father. All right. So, but then the one who pretend that one is not. Uh, <laughs> so we don't have. Yeah, the Jews have every right to their covenant God. To the promises and the bible says that right we those who love them right pray for them will prosper prosper means what you will your well-being right every area spirit soul and body will be blessed i intercede for the sake of my family and friends who dwell there that may all may live in peace right for us who that's one of the prayers that we can pray not into obsess obsessively, right? But just remember that it's a blessing. It's just like the word of God says, if you read Revelations, you are? Yes, okay, <laughs> yes. Blessed are those who read this Revelation. Yeah, even just reading, open the book of Revelation, you already get started to get blessed, right? And the devil is one who tell you Revelation very hard to understand. So no, very few Christians dare to read Revelation and they miss out one blessing. There are so many areas in life. Communion is a blessing. It's a celebration, right? When people, the devil turn around. Oh, it's a, when you take communion, you have to confess all your sins. <laughs> so it becomes a very scary thing to do, but actually it's a blessing, okay? So, one of the blessings you want more blessings in your life right just keep uh, when you hear jerusalem pray for them the prosperity of jerusalem that god you know bless them no more will you call isaiah 62 all right so uh it's a lot bring us you know some of the songs we sing are a little bit jewish songs all right don't don't worry we have not become crazy <laughs> to become jewish right but do you know our Bible is written in Hebrew and Greek. <laughs> of course, today, the word of God is uh, best written by the Holy Spirit, right? But the original language that God spoke was in Hebrew to the Jews and later on in the New Testament in Greek. So that Hebrew language is very rich. <laughs> it is like God communicating his heart, his mind, his his. Uh, character everything to his chosen people in Hebrew. That's called language. So if we can 
if you can learn it, good. But if not, we just learn here a bit and that. But understand, right? That that is the communication, all right, between God and us. So it's not uh, wrong to look into the Old Testament. Yeah. Yes, we live in the new as a new creation in Christ, all right. But the Old Testament is a foreshadow that brings to Christ, right? So point us to Christ, the Savior, the Messiah that the Jews rejected. Okay, but the blessing and the covenant, God wants to bless them, is still there. God never take it away, even though they sinned in the rejected Jesus, the Messiah. So last week I talked about the land shall be married, just a little bit to bring back, because this is where the Holy Spirit is heading us. All right, the direction, all right? Remember, the direction in your life. Right, it will determine the course of your life. God's word, what God, what word you receive from God and put in your heart will determine your direction, your course, and your destiny, right? The destination that you're going. No more will you be called rejected and your country no more called ruin. You'll be called Hepsiba, my delight. Yeah, Hepsiba. <laughs> Marianne. Hepsiba, yeah. <laughs> Hatsiba, God's delight is in you. It's a beautiful name, you know. The Jews love this name, Hatsiba. Whenever you call yourself Hatsiba, right, you're, you're saying you are a delight, God's delight. You know, it's delight, the favorite. Enjoy, just like you enjoy ice cream, you enjoy food, right? So when you are, the how you enjoy that food is how God enjoy you. Enjoy each one of us. That's what we were created for. To give pleasure to our creator. Right? Okay. And your land build up or married. Owned and protected by the Lord. You don't have to worry. Uh, Elisha, nobody protect you or what? God is there. You got Holy Spirit. You got God the Father, God the Son, God the Holy Spirit, and all the hosts of heaven in clung in your house with you. Huh? Anything, God will not allow evil to come near you. Okay, sometimes, right? So that's where when we learn more and more, we were able to push aside all those thoughts. Now, don't tell, don't say uh, I am exempted from that. Even where I am, sometimes you receive a message and they give me frightening things, <laughs> news, right? Where does it hit the mind? Okay, and that's where the fear comes. Some person say something, you know, that is very frightening. And we begin to live in fear. When we know we have God's word in our heart, we can overcome that thought that where the, the devil tried to put through, through can be through people. Yeah, it's like an attack like that, but attack where always in our mind. And that's where the spirit man rise up, say, No, no, no evil will come near me. No evil, no, right? Elisha will live. Yeah, your children will live because God says so. I don't care what you say, or don't care what, what dream you got or whatever, that's not from God, right? Any evil dream or whatever is not from God, right? If we have not put that inside us, when someone say like that, you can actually be very frightened, okay? So we still go back to what God said. So God said we are fruitful, we will have long life, we will blossom, Right, you and your family, your land, your, your business will prosper. Right, then you have someone come and tell you, No, this business <laughs> is going to go down. Then your five senses tell you, Yeah, let keep going down. Right, but what does God say? God says you will prosper if you are in Him. All right, in Him. That's why we come in to grow. In, come in, not go out. Come in first. Then only you can go out. Come in to the presence of God, into the Word of God into the family of God. Come in to hear Him, and then He will send you out. All right, married, blessed, okay, fruitful, protected. We are all own. Who will not protect their own? <laughs> right, just like the eagle protect their the the the, the small eaglets. All right, mother protect the children. All that God we belong to Him. He will protect us. Okay. You own us. All right. Because God delight in you, your land shall be married as like a wedding celebration. Okay. So the celebration uh, at any wedding, there is a celebration that two people are joined together. 
when we married to the Lord, we are joined together. That is a celebration, all right? In the Jewish culture, they even celebrate even more, right? With dancing and everything, okay? So, the celebration comes after the marriage. Correct or not? <laughs> all right? Not before, right? Immediately, I either at the marriage time, from there already start, right? The marriage, there's a celebration. Okay, what? And because of the rejoicing, two people are being joined together in the natural. In the spiritual, right? We married to Jesus. Okay, I showed you the verse. When we receive him. But the celebration only in heaven. <laughs> because the, the Bible says what? The, the angels uh, rejoice. No, and then on earth, maybe for a second. <laughs> and then no more celebration. Okay, what happened? All right, why is it that only for that while if you receive a person, receive the Lord, then you only understand from the word that heaven is rejoicing because God is rejoicing and you are joined with Jesus. Then on this earth, something happened. No more celebration already. <laughs> okay, look at the why, why this happened. Because in this celebration, it's like the fire cooking. <laughs> okay, I'll show you. Okay, Exodus 15, 1 to 8. Then Moses and the Israelites sang this song. So this is after uh, crossing the Red Sea, right? They went into uh, over the other side. Escape from the Egyptian already with all the mighty signs and miracles that God did. So when they reached the other side of the Red Sea, Moses and the Israelites sang this song to God, giving voice together and I'm singing my heart out to God, not my mind, not my voice, <laughs> my heart. Your heart can sing, okay? Your heart can sing. Sing to who? To God, all right? So whenever there is, uh, you see, something wonderful have happened, God have done miracle, that's what they, have, they did, right? To them, it's a victory because the Egyptians were all drowned. So look at this, right? He pitched horse and rider into the sea. So God, to the Moses and uh, uh, Miriam and the Jews and the Israelites at that time, they were excited, very happy because they saw victory. The enemy was drowned, but they walked through. So these are the words that came out. God is my strength, he is my song, and he is my salvation. This is the kind of God I have. You see, the Jews are very mm -hmm. expressive people, right? <laughs> okay, so they celebrate. Okay, let's see how they celebrate. They saw that their yeah, God is great. Can open the Red Sea. Which of your people can do? <laughs> the richest man on this earth can do or not? All right. Can open the Red Sea or not? Can drown the, the you know, Egyptians? And we, we, we have been learning, right? Uh, some of you in the, in the sessions about uh, Gideon, about, you know, the Jews, how they overcame all the enemies, the, 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 the Pisa heights and all that, right? What, how? all by the power of God, okay? This is the kind of God I have. Today, what kind of God do you have as a believer, <laughs> as a Christian? Yeah, the kind of God that you only say, God, where are you? Because I'm in trouble. <laughs> the kind of God that, you know, you only cry out to when something very, very, you cannot do already, right? But to them, to the Jews, right? They say, that this is the kind of God I have, the powerful God, the good God who gave them salvation, who saved them from the enemy, the Egyptian that was going to kill them. How do we get killed today? Stress. <laughs> One day, stress. Got money or not, good job or not, no help. And eventually die. That's the slow death. <laughs> correct. Uh, you spread Robert those words correct. Or not. Okay. The world, the devil kill you slowly, slowly, slowly. <laughs> right? That's why I end up at the end, cancer, 
stress or jump from the building or a heart attack. Okay, why? Slowly, slowly, all the stress, the pressure. But in God's presence is what? Pleasure. So we need to know how to come into God's presence all right, and live in that presence. So the children of Israel, they experience the mighty hand of God. And they say, this is the kind of God I have and I'm telling the world. Why Christians today don't? Quiet one, don't tell about God in the world <laughs> because they don't know what kind of God they have. <laughs> they themselves are not sure, right? So when you begin to know what kind of God you have, you will go Cambodia, <laughs> right? And tell the Cambodians this is the kind of God. You will go to your next door neighbor and tell them like a Madeline, right? Use Facebook. You can tell, tell whoever inside Facebook the kind of thought that she had that healed her, the pain that she went through, all right? And then who will exalt her, yeah? Appear to her in that pain, reduce it, heal her, brought her the best doctors, right? While she built her spirit man in faith, not her fault, right? But today, the Lord deliver. Deliver her, deliver each one, Elisha, no one, yeah, everyone can have that. So when a person is not telling, it's not, you don't have to think, you must go and save souls like a Jehovah's Witness. If not, you will not enter heaven. No, when you know the kind of God you have, good, gracious, full of love, unconditional, and also powerful, yeah, you will want to tell the world because you have the only solution <laughs> to the world's problem okay, of death. And you have what you have, life. When a person is dying, you don't give them. <laughs> no, you don't give them money or what, right? They're dying uh, at, or, or in the desert, dying because many days never drink water, going to die. What they need is water, life life, what you all have today, all right, as children of God, God's uh, family, sons and daughters, we have life, abundant life, Zoe life, God's kind of life, you're born again from above, definitely you have his genes, in the spirit, right, in the spirit, you have abundant life, not plant, not did, seed didn't grow, that's why clouded, crowded by all the thoughts of this world, so when the Holy Spirit come, when the fire is put, the frog also need to jump out, right? <laughs> yeah, hot already. Had to go out. Okay. So when you are hot with the fire of God, when knowing who your God is and how powerful in your life, you will jump out, right? To tell the world. So that's why Robert Lowe is in Facebook, okay? To tell the world. <laughs> he also don't like it. Yeah. yeah. Right? But you use it. All these media tools that God give us today in the 21st century, right? We are in the 21st century. Okay. To use, to do what? <laughs> to expand, to tell the world. So easy, right? You don't have to buy a plane ticket. Okay, You can tell the world to the social media, but you must know what kind of God happens. All right? This is the God of my father. I'm spreading the news far and wide. You say, okay, I got no money to buy plane ticket. Your Facebook free one. <laughs> Anybody had to pay for Facebook? It's free. Instagram free. Okay. We can, once we know who is the God that we have, we can tell the world and spread the, what news? Good news. Near and far. Far and wide. Okay. Everywhere. God is a fighter. Pure God. True and true. A warrior, right? He's the captain of the host of army. That's why in a way, in, you know, there's another illustration of the church as the army of God, okay? But not lawful type, right? When we understand grace, we are the army. We learn what is a soldier, how to listen to captain and all that. The word of God, that's where the teachings are there in uh, uh, the build, uh, developing the spirit man, right? So that we can be that godly, loving army. But that, that army, why is an army needed? Fight what? Huh? Huh? Uh, from what? From enemy. Yes, 
Why is that army needed? Because there's an enemy outside. <laughs> if no enemy, that is it. The devil makes the Christians think that there's nothing, no enemy. Okay, so every day, coffee and cakes. <laughs> okay, I always say, uh, I, 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 I still like coffee and cakes. But, oh, no, no, I don't drink coffee. I like chili fish. <laughs> okay, but church has become like that, you know, where we just meet, fellowship, bye-bye, hi, hi, and then that's it, you know listen to a sermon, then fall asleep, the Bible also dropped down. <laughs> hey, already I witnessed this with my own eyes. How come the person sleep until the Bible dropped onto the floor? He also about to drop out on the chair, drop down from the chair, right? So this is oblivious that there is an enemy, all right? Although this enemy spiritually has been defeated by the devil, he blinds the minds of people that they're not aware of him, okay? And then how he come into the people's lives, right? Through telling lies, yeah, all the lies, okay? So that they just don't, don't know how to fight. So if there's an enemy, that's why they need to be a warrior. You need to take put up the full armor of God, okay? It's not the physical armor. Every day, if you're not conscious of God, there is all the lies coming in, like uh, Eve having conversation with a snake, with a serpent, the devil. So if there's an enemy, then we need to fight. But it is not trying to kill the devil. He's already defeated under our feet, but Christians don't know. All right? So his part is the devil is just doing the same thing, telling lies, telling that you are not good, or this is like that, like that, all contrary to the word of God. And you will never know what is a lie if you don't know the truth. <laughs> it's as simple as that. So because all this life is all these years is like, oh, you just take in everything from this world that sounds good. But now when you come to know the world, God, I yo, <laughs> this is not the truth, man. You know, and I'm not, you know, meant to live life like that. That you know, was uh, the, you know, all the things that we learn. Yeah, this is you. You only come up to here, this is all you can do. No need to go further. The, all kinds of lies, I don't to tell you lies, right? But you don't know what it is until you know the truth, okay? So, this was their shouts, okay? Of victory, of praise to God. Pharaoh's chariots and army, he jumped into the sea. The elite of his officers, he drowned in the Red Sea. And while ocean waters poured over them, they sang like a rock in the deep blue sea. When you meditate on God's word about what Jesus has done for you, you actually, in your spirit, God bring you back through time to that place at the cross where you saw in your spirit Jesus taking your sin, taking your uh, sickness upon himself. And then you come back to 2022. Then you say, I'm healed. Okay, so this is the spiritual realm, right? Where if we are not open to it, we cannot experience the, the reality and the power of God's word. That's where it takes time. It takes time to watch movie, right? <laughs> How many of you watch movie one five minutes and then you see the whole show already? Most movie at least one hour. Okay, if you want to watch a spiritual movie, not the one that they put on the YouTube, right? The spiritual one, the Bible describing what Jesus did for you 2,000 years ago. Can you watch that in five seconds? <laughs> you never see anything. That's what meditation is about, okay? Where you sit down and you see, let the Holy Spirit lead you through the scriptures, through the word of God to that place, that time, all right, where all these things happen. And then it goes into your spirit, the truth, and begin to, that's called revelation. So you have watched a movie, a spiritual movie, all right, when you go into the word of God like that. But it takes some time, <laughs> okay? Yeah, so listening to God, listening to sermon, right, takes some time. You cannot say, come in gone, right? And that's where God will speak to you, right? And you 
it's as if your spirit and life comes and say, it's 2,000 years ago, uh, Jesus died. What has that got to do with me now? Okay? God is eternal. That is, he lived outside time. Right? Well, we, he created time, we live inside time. God lived outside time. So he has every power and ability to bring us back in time, our, our earth time, and show us what happened to us, what Jesus did, the power of what Jesus did. That today, in Christ, we are healed, we are saved, we are delivered from whatever sickness that was, you know, in our olden time, our ancestors, you know. Yeah, this, this morning, I just, uh, as I was, um, you know, this thought just came to me. Hey, my mom actually uh, passed away from a mild stroke. Right? Then they say, oh, these things are all hereditary. But I, all this while, because I've been putting uh, God's word about healing, I never think of uh, hereditary disease and all that. You know, I just go along, whatever comes with God. They say, oh yeah, if I think along that line, I'll be very frightened of uh, uh, heart disease and all that. Because there's somebody in the family, right? That's how the world tells you. So there's a lot of believers are still living in that fear, okay, of whatever their parents or poor parents have. Sometimes it can hit us, right? And if we do not put God's word inside, that everything from the past or from Adam, please do not inherit, <laughs> okay? Never meant to inherit. Jesus already put a stop to it, cut it off, right? Today, your roots are in Christ. Christ got sickness or not? <laughs> Christ got cancer or not? Right? Christ got anything, uh, uh, heart disease for you to inherit? They don't have. So that's where that reality is in the spirit. And when we have that, it will flow to our bodies. Okay? And you live a life without stress, without pressure. Pressure. Because your roots, your genes are, are all now in Christ. That is in the spirit first. So see how important it is to build our spirit man. Yeah. Okay. Your strong hand. This is uh, Moses talking to God, right? Your strong right hand, God, shimmers with power. See? First, of course, they saw the manifestation now, right? Uh, but before they saw the manifestation of the miracles, they means uh, Moses and the Israelites. Moses already got the instruction from God. All right. In fact, I think Moses see it first. In the spirit, he saw the deliverance of God already. All right. But the children of Israel had to see for themselves first. <laughs> then only they believe. So your strong right hand, power. Their God is a God of power. Now let me ask you, your God got power now. <laughs> ah, so if he got, you also got, right? Yes. Your right hand shatters the enemy. In your mighty majesty, you smash your upstart enemies. You let loose your hot anger and burn them to a crisp. At a blast upon your nostrils, the waters fill up. You know, all these uh, description of how the Egyptians were, uh, were drowned. All right? And they were taken up and the Israelites were saved. Have you seen the devil defeated? In your spirit, where? Describe that one very clearly. <laughs> Ephesians, Colossians. Remember, I bring up those scriptures where Jesus, where Paul described. So how did he describe it? Right? When God took him and showed him, right, in his 14 years, all the revelations of the spiritual realm, what happened? And then he was able to bring it out. What did he say? Jesus went into hell, stripped the devil of authority. Have you seen it? Why are you not shouting and excited? If you haven't, because you haven't seen it, because you read the verse and then sleep. <laughs> it is finished. No, go back into the word of God. The word of God is life, spirit and life, right? By the Holy Spirit, that's why before, before you open and read the Bible, the so Holy Spirit, open my eyes, open my eyes, that I may be, behold wondrous things, your wonders, your power, what you did in the spirit, in the natural, in the spirit, what you did, oh, bring it to 
my mind, to my imagination, to my heart. Let me see it. Because if you have seen Jesus taking the enemy, it's just like you see movie, <laughs> right? What you see is so powerful. Or you see the real one. Somebody got executed. Uh, the, 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 the rapist, serial killer. Okay, so they show it in TV, the execution. After that, so that the killer is always in your territory, for example, where you live. So all the ladies are very scared, all the men are very scared. Right? It's a killer, a rapist. So they dare not go out, or you have to be careful, must have bodyguard for that. But when the person was caught and then executed, and you saw for yourself, they put it into the TV, into all the social media, the execution. After that, you dare to go out or not? Yeah. Ah, before that, you dare not, right? Yeah. So we need to see it. What happened? And that for us is in the spirit first. Okay. When you see in the spirit, okay, what God, Jesus did, right? By defeating the devil, you will never be scared of the devil anymore. <laughs> because you saw, just like you saw the serial killer executed. The execution of the devil, Satan was already done 2,000 years ago, right? After, when Jesus went into hell, okay? And he got no more power. The devil got no more power over Jesus. He was the defeated enemy. Today, go read those scriptures that tell you what happened, right? At the cross, at the resurrection, like a movie. And you see, okay, this person is no more a threat to me. I saw his execution. Okay, when you see that, that's why you will tell the world. <laughs> and you're no more scared of him. All right. So the Bible is the revelation of Jesus Christ to us, what he has done for us. But where do we see this truth? Not from the mind, from the spirit first. All right, from your spirit man, the pictures that, that is in the Bible. Let the Holy Spirit bring it live to you. The enemy spoke, I'll pursue, I'll hunt them down, I'll drive up the plunder. They're describing a scene, okay, of what happened in the natural. And what we have today is the scene of what happened in the spirit that is eternal through Christ. So they said the enemy spoke, the enemy is the Egyptian, right? I'll pursue you, I'll hunt you down, I'll divide up the plunder, I'll glut myself on them, I'll pull out my sword, my fist, my fist will send them raining. Today, you still got this enemy talking to you like this. Go on. Go on. <laughs> no one is free from that, okay? Uh, it's not no more. It's God. But how do you react? How do you uh, counteract this one? How do you handle when these thoughts come? They will not say exactly these words. <laughs> okay, The thoughts will come to you. You sure or not, you are really safe. You sure or not, you, you know, you, you will have this joy forever. Maybe just for a while. Are you sure it's God or not? Yeah, that is the enemy pursuing you. Are you sure after you type, you know, you will have enough? Yeah, this is the enemy pursuing you, giving you all his thoughts, half true, or doubts, actually, right? This is how he pursue you. He don't pursue you that our Lord pursue us with love. <laughs> he pursue you to kill you. Jesus said that. The devil came to kill, steal, and destroy. How? Not take one knife and kill you straight away. As I said, it's a slow death. <laughs> Very slow end, right? Slowly, every day, some thought, that seed to come inside. You sure or not? So when you take an action of faith based on God's word, you sure or not? Maybe somebody will kidnap you on the way to Cambodia. <laughs> no, but he came back safe and sound <laughs> and totally different. All right. Growing from glory to glory. See? So he will hunt you down. You think the devil will stop that work? All right. Maybe leave you a while for a while. I uh, say these people going into the session <laughs> learning who they are leave them alone let go and find another christian who don't know who they are one but after a while oh not meditating already <laughs> so come back ah the roaring lion right coming back but god is good thing thank god for his grace right still keeping us right in our failures our weakness is still there so we need to know the grace right 
he will hunt you down, but we want the, the other hunting, right? In Psalms 23, right? Where our Lord, the Good Shepherd, will hunt us with his love. He will pursue you, right? Surely with what? Goodness and mercy. We prefer that one, right? <laughs> so make sure the devil tries to come in a little bit. You just keep up. You're able to recognize, all right? Those thoughts are not from God. <clears throat> You blew with all your might and the sea covered them. It's the power of God. Okay? The part where God did, where we cannot do. Our part is just to hear his word, believe his word. The miracle, all right, the, the actual happening of the parting of the Red Sea, all right, the deliverance is all done by God. The healing is God. All right? The Holy Spirit worked. So he blew. The breath of God did it. Created even new things are all done by our God. Okay? Killing the enemy all done by God. The sank like a lead weight, lead, lead weight in the majestic waters. Who compares with you among gods? Remember? Yeah, I think Joel reminded me, right? That uh, yes, I'm very particular about this. <laughs> because it's so powerful. Who? When we sing the song, who compares with you? And then you still see our God so small. Who compares with you? That means there's no comparison. Yeah? Who can compare? All right, that description, those words will coin from a heart that saw that his God is the biggest God, is the greatest God. Who can compare? Come. <laughs> when you go to mission, right, the devil challenge you. That's where you say God will show his power. And so many testimonies of those who go into places where there is demonic activity, where so much of uh, witchcraft, right? And then if the preacher doesn't know who his God is, oh, he died. <laughs> Very fast died, right? But because the preacher knows there's no other God who can compare with my God, he is the real God, the Jehovah, the creator, the powerful one. So you try whatever you want, the, the poison, you put whatever, snakes, whatever, cannot compare, right? Because God is the most powerful. When you know that, in awesome praises, you will burst forth. All right, in praises unto God, the wonder working God, a miracle God that is our God, the, the supernatural. Don't be contented with natural because you are a supernatural being. Yeah, the whole the fire is to stir up that re realization of the supernatural God living inside you. So we need the Holy Spirit to stir that up, to heat it up, turn it on highest fire. You stretch out your right hand and the earth swallowed them up. But the people you redeem and you let and let in merciful love, you guided them by your protection. See, these are praises. So when we say, okay, come praise the Lord. Everybody say, ah, God, you're good. trying to think what to praise God. No, praising God is your experience, all right, of his word, of his power in your life. Then your mouth just <laughs> comes out, right? That you are great, you are powerful, you are good, you are faithful. Yeah? So it comes, you have redeemed me. Well, where does all these words come out? You can write a script and then the, the wind will blow <laughs> your paper out. Okay? Because life comes from within you. Right? When you experience God for yourself, praises come out naturally. You are merciful. If you have ever experienced God's mercy, you deserve to be punished and he didn't punish you. Yeah, say, God, let me experience all this. Okay? And when God opened your eyes, then you will see and you'll be able to praise him. You no more will say, I don't know what to say. <laughs> really? You know what to say about your husband, your wife? A lot, right? <laughs> the longer you live with them, you've got a lot of things to say about them. You won't be stuck for words with the people that you live with. You will know how to describe them. Or you either praise them or you just <laughs> nothing to praise. Okay? But that is your walk with him. When you experience him in reality, right? And we come together or even on your own, you will have words coming out from you. Right? You guided them. Have you experienced God guiding you? So every area. So some 
have experienced this area. That's why you see oh, every time they testify on this area, right? So, but there's so much more. So praise the Lord for that area. You experience God's deliverance. You experience God's guidance. But there's so many things in life, right? You're going to see, experience God's provision, God's power, God's healing, God's peace, God's rest, so much. God's mercy, right? When they heard, when people heard, they were scared. Philistines with it and trembled. When you praise God like that, the enemy trembles. Where? In the praises of his people. Okay? They, be they begin to get scared. The enemy, the devil, all those demonic uh, little, little demons sent to destroy you. They get scared. They run. Right out of your mouth, you are declaring when the saint of God realizes when Sarah, oh, I love the double Sarah here, right? Begin to praise God, experience God, the spirit man grow, and they start to praise God. Right? All the assignment of the devil to destroy you all go back. <laughs> they go back home. Where is their home? Hell. Not your home, okay? Hell is the devil's home. Yours is heaven. The Philistine reef and tremble. Are you someone that frightened the enemy? <laughs> if we move in our natural, he's not scared of you at all. All right? But when you move in the power of the Holy Spirit and in the word of God, speaking God's word from the abundance of your heart, he look at you, it's like looking at Jesus. The devil's scared of Jesus? Yes. So, there's so many Jesus here. But to be, are we going to grow or still like a baby Jesus? <laughs> the baby Jesus. Okay? We're not baby Jesus, all right? We are the grown Jesus. All right? Spirit man, grow. Okay? That the devil's scared of you. The moment, Sarah, you open your mouth when you are grown up. You know, spirit man is full. Wow. In the, in the spiritual realm, it's like, all start to run. The devil, the enemy. Okay, they are scared. So, spoken word, speak, declare. But if you keep quiet, that <laughs> nobody is scared. Right? Declare. Use your mouth from the after you put in God's word in your heart to start speaking. That is witnessing. All right, declaring God faithfulness. Even if you are a newborn baby, you experience a little bit. Start to declare that, yes, I experienced God, you know, in that little bit. And then you have more, more, more. Eventually, you are that powerful voice of God in the dark. Everybody in Canaan panicked and fell faint. Today, the Christians are panicking, <laughs> right? When they hear COVID, oh, so scary. See, even our Elisha's 79 years old, right? He's not scared, <laughs> right? Then you hear, oh, no job, business bad or whatever. You hear all the wrong news. Believers are panicking. But in the God of the Jews, all right, who is panicking? Huh? Yeah, the Egyptian, right? The enemy, uh, like Robert Lowe killed. A long time, no, no job to do already. <laughs> he burned the Egyptians. Okay, we call it, you know, each time, Someone, uh, family received the Lord. Then we have all these idols, right? So we have the our one who burned all these idols. Or Egyptian is our brother, uh, Robert Lowe. Okay, so long time no no work already. So <laughs> go save souls. Okay, get out the Egyptian. Then call, uh, what phone number? And then Robert Lowe will go to burn all the Egyptian. Okay, so the by right. Okay, when we are in God. God is our God, Jehovah. Then, when we declare the enemy panic, <laughs> the devil panic. Here today, you see, oh, the church reduced to a place where they panic. <laughs> Can you read properly? <laughs> all right, read properly. All right, Christians are not supposed to panic. It is the devil supposed to panic because this is our God. All right, that is where your spirit man is. So whatever news you hear, whether it's in the hospital, in your corporate work, or in the family, or neighborhood, or country, if it's bad news, it's not to panic the believers. The 
believers still stand strong. Okay. Only the devil is supposed to panic. Okay. None of you belong to the devil. <laughs> so don't panic. You belong to God. All right. The right arm. Everybody in Canaan panic and felt pain, dread, and terror. Send them really before your brandished right arm. So they saw the enemy, but they saw their God bigger. Okay. Until, see, God was there. Until when? Until the, that's the crossing of the Red Sea, right? In the through the Red Sea. Until God never closed the waters of the Egyptian until his people crossed over and entered. So don't worry. So I am very slow. Huh? God, maybe <laughs> the rest go already. You know, <laughs> maybe I will be drowned. No, right? That's where God's grace is. As long as you are still listening, all right, to the correct word of God and under the anointing of the Holy Spirit, yeah, God will not leave you out. <laughs> okay, He will make sure you also cross over, and especially if you have a destiny and all are called by God, all right, in Christ, cross over and enter what the promised land. Okay. God wants every one of you, all right, and of his children to cross over the Red Sea. All that remind them of their sins, their past, okay, and where the devil still have power and authority as long as you're not a believer, right? In the Red Sea, okay, in the sins. But you, Jesus, through Jesus, we can now walk over, cross out of that condemnation, that guilt, that shame, the past, sin, sickness. Disease, poverty, lack, fear, cross over and enter into the promised land, into the promises in Christ, including blessings of Abraham and blessings in Christ. The rest, the peace, the joy, every area. The kingdom of God is what? Righteousness, peace, and joy in the Holy Spirit. <laughs> You know why I laugh? Because these people are very funny. <laughs> okay, the physical one. <laughs> I mean here. All right. So, when you know this, okay, we have much more than Abraham's blessings, but we have not, not even tap into any of it. Okay, so today, God is taking us, crossing over from the past, from the guilt, from the shame, whatever. Condemnation, sickness, disease, no more already. Go into the promises of God. Amen? Yeah, for your destiny. Then go inside the promised land or work to do one. <laughs> okay. Yeah, so that's another story, right? So when we first, first need to cross there lah, to go in first. After going in, yeah, then feed you with milk and honey. <laughs> but there are enemy there also, right? There are giants there. So that's why. There are some of you who are more grown up already. You can help the others, okay, by defeating enemy, right? A soldier need to be grown up and matured and strong muscles. Then only can become soldier, right? So, but at the same time, they are protecting the family members, which is all those who are not yet grow up. So we have don't worry if you have you are just young, just receive the Lord, right? You may don't worry. Okay, then the other older ones who are supposed to be stronger in the spirit will take care of you, okay, protect you and bring you to come to know your powerful daddy God, Abba Father. You brought them and they ended in end, they entered, right? You brought them and planted them who God's grace. All right, God in his power brought each one of you and then planted you okay it's very important to be planted <laughs> that means you have roots to take root we are not uh, uh just well that touch and go uh. <laughs> or, or i don't know which plant can grow without being planted right? no plant right there is no plant no seed that can grow by itself in mid-air or one day you plant your seed inside here this pot Tomorrow you dig it up <laughs> and then you put into another pot. Before it can take root, grow roots, you dig it up and then you put into another pot. Can grow or not? A stunted, uh, very slow, uh, right? Some may, may even die in the process because you keep digging it, digging it, digging it, uprooting it. So remember the promise of God, we will not be uprooted. We need to be planted 
right? In the house of God, planted in a place where you know you can get food, you can get water, you can get sunshine, right? You can grow your spirit, okay? So be planted, all right? They, they are planted there on the mountain of your heritage. You want to be planted where? Where your blessings are, okay? Your heritage in the mountain, not in the <laughs> lowland, okay? In the mountain, and that's Zion. The mountain of Zion, our heritage, the church today, all right? The place where you live, the place you made, your century master that you established with your own hands. Lord, rule forever, for eternity. That was their praise unto God. Yes, Pharaoh's horses and chariots and riders went into the sea and God turned the waters back on them. Okay, so how are you going to see this spiritual thing happen to you? I just said just now. Huh? Huh? Yes, how? Ah, how? How where does it start? Eh, from yes, from the heart. From uh, what what? That means be at the place. What where is that, that place? Where you get that place? Where you get the movie? Where you get the picture? Ah, yes, yes, yes. Okay, okay, okay. Not from uh, YouTube. Okay. <laughs> Okay, All right, from the word of God, All right, as you learn, you will know where, which scripture you can refer to as you, as a, you know, come into these uh, sessions, right, will guide you, right, into where is the happening, the real happening in the spirit, and then on your own, go there, go there where the happening was 2,000 years ago, but it is eternal, the spiritual life, the spiritual things in the word is eternal, so the Israelites, saw all that, okay, the, the enemy being thrown into the sea, and the waters, after every, every Israelite has crossed, then only God covered back the waters, the Israelites, but for the Israelites, but so for the new creation, even the, uh, whatever disease, whatever virus, whatever thing happened outside, it is not for you, right, God will make sure you cross over, you walk on dry land, through the middle of the sea. So the middle of the storm, through the middle of the pandemic, through the middle of everything, there might be more virus coming up. <laughs> it's the end days. Are we going to forever stay at home? <laughs> no, okay? But you cannot force anyone, right? We are just like you never force anyone to exercise faith when they don't have it yet, okay? But the part we do is build the faith in the person, the believer, right? Where? They, they will be able to rejoice. They're able to uh, overcome in the midst of the world. That's why Psalms 91 says, why, why a thousand may fall at my right hand, 10,000 at my left, but it will not come near me. Has that come into your spirit? Okay, so it will not come near you. That's what God said. So you will be able to write true, to go through whatever storm and you will prosper in the midst of tribulation, in the midst of the world calamity. Right? It will not touch you. Right? The, the people who went into uh, the fire, uh, uh, Daniel's three friends, the fire didn't touch them, right? And the fire that was supposed to burn them. And they came out, no even have a scent, a smell of fire burn. Whereas the, the, the one who put them in died. <laughs> See, the protection of God is on you. This is how God protects. If we know him when we know him all right when our spirit man grows this is how powerful you got bodyguard <laughs> everywhere you go so continue miriam the prophetess aaron's sister took a tambourine so they just came up from uh they saw the defeat of the israel of the egyptian the drowning immediately after that this is what they declared that right? they praise god and miriam the prophetess uh moses sister uh, or Aaron's sister took a tambourine. Ah, like Joan and that, okay? <laughs> Actually, it's very amazing. I didn't think of all this from what happened. It's just the Holy Spirit gift. And then as, as he gave, then I see, oh, this is what happened here. You know, it's so beautiful. And all the women follow her. Hello, women, but not here. <laughs> right, follow, okay? Just follow as the Lord began to lead bring rejoicing all right and the anointing that will flow okay from one person to another they followed her with singing with tambourines dancing get more 
Okay, Miriam led them in singing, sing to God. What a victory. Okay, he pitched horse and rider into the sea. So in our singing, our praise, our worship, our dancing, right? It is a declaration of God as the victor. Different from the world dancing, right? <laughs> that one is to attract boyfriend. <laughs> no, here it is a declaration that our God is great. Our God defeated the devil, killed the Egyptian. The devil has no more power. It's a song of victory, a dance of victory, right? That God is with us again <laughs> now, right? Like David, why he danced like that, right? Because the Ark of the Covenant came back and the Ark of the Covenant represents the presence of God. So if presence of God is here, we dance with victory, a shout, okay? Shout, singing. That's why you need to tune out the sound. <laughs> hey, check on that side. Okay? Tune out the sound. We cannot hear. All right? So, the shout of victory, right? Where it come from, right? Our heart, whatever music we have for the time being until God raised up, you know, more and more musicians, okay? And worship leaders who know how to worship God with the anointing in spirit and in truth. Okay? Miriam led them in singing. To God is a victory, no sentimental song. <laughs> you know, victory, songs of victory, declaring how great God is. Why God, you know, Holy Spirit suddenly gave us those songs that are a bit Hebrewish. They, these people know how to sing songs of victory. Ah, the, the, the church one is all the sentimental songs. <laughs> they don't realize that God is a God of victory. <laughs> they just know I'm feelings <laughs> you know once i feel sad then today i feel better no okay it's not feelings remember yesterday i shared about the word heart right yeah it's a uh, how the jews know their god when it says love your god right it's in their in thoughts in their uh, minds okay how god great is it is not the emotion so today don't let the devil lead you into emotional Christianity. Okay, our Christianity is the living God, right? That delivered the Jews, deliver you, right? Janice, where you are, each one of you, wherever you are, God is our deliverer, is our savior, right? It's a powerful God. Okay, right. Um Moses let Israel from the Red Sea to the wilderness of Shore. They traveled three days, okay, through the wilderness without finding any water. Three days always have a significance of also Jesus dying for us, right? Three days, okay, but we won't go into that much. They got to Mara where they couldn't drink the water at Mara. It was bitter. So a certain place, the word Mara means bitter. That's why they call the place bitter. So sometimes in our lives, we have gone through bitterness, right? Mara the valley of bitter, right? Uh, experiences that are very sad, very bitter. But the good news is that today the Lord has taken that bitterness and given us something else. Okay, let's continue. The people complained to Moses, so what are we supposed to drink? Okay, so Moses cried out in prayer to God. Right? God pointed him to a stick of wood. Moses threw it into the river water and the water turned sweet. Who absorbed all that bitterness? Jesus. Yeah. Jesus on the cross took all the bitterness of all your lives, whatever you have gone through. Yeah? He absorbed it all. All those bitterness is a curse. Except for bitter God, right? <laughs> okay, that's all you can eat. But Generally, bitterness in life is a curse. Okay? And Galatians right, 3 says, 310, okay? Jesus became the curse for us. That you don't have to have bitterness anymore in your life. That's why we are able to forgive others. You know, one of the bitterness is out of unforgiveness, right? People hurt you so deep. But realize that Jesus had taken it. That's why when you understand forgiveness, Jesus has forgiven you unconditionally. Now. The, the water that flow from you is no more bitter water. <laughs> because every time we drink bitter water, we vomit bitter water. Okay? But now, the water has become sweet. Right? Jesus is like the honey. Right? It's always describing Jesus. When at the exchange, at the cross, he took your bitterness, your bitter life, and he gave you 
sweet wine. <laughs> okay, so drink it. Drink. That's why Jesus said, whoever is thirsty, come and drink. Drink the living waters. Drink the word of God that is life. Drink, drink, drink. Not enough drink. This is living waters that will turn bitterness to become sweet. Your, lo your life will no more be bitter and God don't even want to remember you to remember your bitter life. That's why the new covenant is what? He forgive you. If we don't remember of your sins, why do we remind God about our sins? When he has already turned it to become sweet because of Jesus, right? That's the place where God set up rules and procedures. That's where he started testing them. God said, if you listen, listen obediently to how God tells you to live in his presence. Okay, they're, they're still under the law, but you take out this part, all right? Where, where are we to live? In his presence, all right? In his presence is? <laughs> fullness of joy and in his right hand is still his presence is pleasures for evermore yes okay so live in his presence when we hear god's word and we do god's word from being born again no more under law because under law is you obey god to be blessed under grace is you obey god because you have been blessed Got difference or not? Yeah, right? You love him because you first love you. So I just changed the words a bit. <laughs> it all got blurry. Yeah. <laughs> okay, now our obedience come from the heart that has received so much the goodness of God, the mercy of God. Then we want to obey this person. All right, that's why God said to husbands, love your wives as Christ loved the church. Then your wife automatically able to Submit. Oh, I've got one husband here looking. Okay. <laughs> yeah. So you don't say, why you don't obey me? No, actually they want to. But you first do love them. How you love them? Not your own way. The way. <laughs> yes, the way God loved his church, right? Willing to die for them. Okay. Then the wife, easy one. Actually, love, no need. That's why God didn't, Paul didn't say, uh, wife, love your husband. Okay, submit, all right? You begin to obey, follow, all right? But comes from the husband loving them. So both part, both have a part, right? And both are believers, easier. If non-believers, then yeah, go through your <laughs> experience because there's a lot of, and how, see how God give you the wisdom, all right? To go through uh, displaying Jesus, all right? To your unbelieving spouse, Obeying his commandments, keeping the laws. Okay, this one is not obey to be blessed. You're already blessed, right? Then you obey out of love. Then I won't strike you with all the diseases. Okay, this is under the law. So I am God, your healer. They came to Elim. It's very strange because I may know a lot of the Bible, but I don't know exactly which come after what. <laughs> I didn't know that in this incident of the victory dance, that it will come to this place, this verse about Elim and palm trees. See, I tell you, that's why I want you all to get to know Holy Spirit. He is an amazing person. He knows where to lead us, where to take us, you know, to guide us, whether in the natural or in the spiritual, in the Bible. Okay? I cannot remember everything from the Bible, also, especially uh, Old Testament, but Holy Spirit knows, right? So, uh, as has led to that, uh, scriptures on the victory song, right? The song of Miriam, the dance of Miriam and Moses. After that, they went to a place called Elim, where there were 12 springs of water and 70 palm trees. <laughs> okay, so uh, we all visited some palm plantation. All of you having in the natural a picture of palm and a lot earlier a few months ago, right, gave me the, uh, the, 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 the message of the palm, the palm tree. It's so important because this is where we're going to flourish, right? Where we understand the different things uh, relating to spiritual and natural of the palm tree, okay? Because blessing and blessing is coming. 
that's a prophetic word that goes forth, but it doesn't just drop from the sky. <laughs> okay, it will come as we have more revelation and understanding how to grow and how this blessing is going to come. So they went to Elim and they came there by the water. Elim in the Hebrew, it means palms. So after the victory song, right, they celebrated when God delivered them from the Egyptian, they came to the first place or rather the second place, right? Second encampment of the Israelites after the Exodus. Exodus is come out from Egypt, all right? So it is a place of palm trees, okay? Palm trees, and it is in the desert, okay? That means very dry, dry land. So there were 12 spring of water, right? In the Hebrew, this word 12 made up of two Hebrew numbers or letters. 2 and 10. Okay? So, we understand from the way God sees things, alright? Shanaim, Shanaim, alright? 2. So, if you go to the uh, concordance, you will see this word 12 separated into two words, made out of 2 and 10. 2 means twofold. So, in this place, uh, Elim, which is palm trees, there is going to be twofold. Double blessing. Elisha, where are you? <laughs> Everything double. There are two Sarahs. <laughs> okay. Two Joe. Double. That means it's not only just one blessing, right? There will be double, right? More and more. Twin. Okay. Two and double second. Coming. That's why in the, in the verse, I think that, that God gave us, I think in Psalm, like, blessing after blessing. So don't just stick to one blessing. God is going to give you more. Double, all right? And the second one is the 10, right? So there are two Hebrew words there. One is two, and which means double. And the other one is 10, is asa. Asa is the number 10, accumulation. Okay, let's look at, so one word come from another word. Why they put that origin, right? That's the, or the original word is the, uh, the type. <laughs> you see the tent the tide means a tent tiding right so you take a tide take a tide today uh, Robert Lowe showed us the verse again right about tiding that word is the word asa it's a tent that means whatever you have you take a tent out that's what God told the Jews to do so it's the same word asa right and in that word tent it also means a tide accumulation it's going to what is going to accumulate? <laughs> you forgot already. What is in the word tight in the Hebrew? Yes. Breath. Asha. Okay. This is in the word. Okay. 6238, all that. All right. It's the concordance that show you the origin of the Hebrew word. All right. So you go one after another, you will find where it comes from. All right. So this one is Asha. Right, it is to be or become rich or wealthy. So to be or become rich or wealthy is in the type, in the tent, in that word. You got it? Asa is the tent, the tent part. It also means accumulate. Accumulate what? Wealth and riches. Where? In the type, in the tiding. All right, because Asha, all right. First, it, uh, just now you saw the tent is tight, right? So now inside the tight is the word asha, which is becoming rich or wealthy. That's why the Jews are so rich and so wealthy. Tithing is just something that is already set by their God, their powerful God for them to do. There's no question about it. <laughs> From young, the, the parents already teach their children how to tithe, right? To be or become wealthy or rich, to gain riches, to accumulate. See how the Jews accumulate, right? Abraham was blessed. More and more sheep, more and more uh, whatever, the, the riches accumulate. So in your type, you may not see today, tomorrow become, you know, uh, filthy, uh, rich or what, but there is an accumulation happening, all right? And in the spirit, and it will manifest in the natural to grow. Right, accumulate is a grow, your plant growing, right? 
your, your, then you will say your bank account is growing <laughs> or your bank account is dying. <laughs> Either one. Okay? So in the tide, it will be growing. Okay? Becoming rich. Okay? So they came to this place called Elim and they had 12 springs, 12 water or wells depicting double blessing and hiding, reaching, rich, wealthy in their type. Got it? Hmm. So this is the place where they are supposed to settle, to camp, right? And they came to Elim. So this is Elim, all right? It's in the desert. So there are, at that time, uh, how many? 12 springs or 12 wells, 2 plus 10. And then they have 70 palm trees, okay? Where there were 12 wells of water, so they have you to see in the natural. This is a natural. And three, now in the original Hebrew, they don't put there 70. Okay, in the original Hebrew. They put there three, four, and ten palm trees. All right? So if you go back to Old King James, that's where you can refer to the uh, Hebrew. All right, the core concordance. If you uh, in the teaching. I think uh, some of you, it's time to learn a bit of importance already. <laughs> okay. All right. Three score and 10. So in the translations that we have, so it becomes 17. Right. But in the original, God put it out to them as three score and 10. That is three 20s. And then 10 is always there. Yeah. The asa. Right. Your type. Okay. So in both the, the spring, and the tree in the tide is your well. It's there where they get provision, where they don't have to worry about finances. <laughs> that time is okay. All right, the food, the, the cattle, the sheep, right? Their provision, their life is in the tent, right? And they where they encamp there by the waters. Okay, nobody in the desert will go and, and camp somewhere else where there is no water. <laughs> they look for the oasis, the water. And this is where God told them to go and they and camp means they get planted there. All right? They stay there. Stay there where there is water, the living word of God. The other part of water is the Holy Spirit, right? You must have both. One cannot, right? Two, so you have the Water the, uh, in the well of salvation, the word of God, and you have the palm trees, okay? The, the shade, the protection. That's where we are learning more about the palm trees, okay? And there is protection, is provision, but not forgetting just one simple thing, the tide. Yeah, that's all, right? That God said to them, your tides are actually a lot of other offerings with other meaning is to make sure that his people are always provided for, are always rich. So simple. It was like a dream. Okay, one more verse. It was like a dream come true. Psalms 1 to 6. When you freed us from our bondage and brought us back to Zion, we laughed and laughed and overflowed with gladness. Left shouting for joy and singing your praise. The Lord has done mighty miracles for that. So what I want to share here is this. Right? He did mighty miracles and we were overjoyed. This is the, uh, the, the Hebrew children, right? When they brought back the captivity of them. You know, they were all under bondage, right? To the Egyptian. So today, remember just now I was saying about the rejoicing, the victory. Before all the other miracles begin to happen, like a financial blessing or your health and all that, the one first miracle in your life is born yeah, born again, salvation, right? Your first born again experience. That's the greatest miracle where you're, you were dead and then now you come to life in your spirit. So from there, they already celebrated. Right? Before they even reached the palm tree and uh, elim. There was the celebration, the song of victory, the dancing. And then they were led to the palm trees, to the place where they can be planted. All right? And they received more and more water so that they can 
be protected, provided every area of uh, needs in their life to enjoy the life, right? To be the chosen, the world can see that God protect them, God take care of them. So where does this part of celebration come in? After you all see the miracles or before? Yeah, before. Just only one thing. After your miracle of salvation. After you got born again. Right? They were the, the crossing of the Red Sea signify that, right? Coming out from the Red Sea, right? Sin and everything into the promised land. But before they eat and partake of the promised land, they already celebrated with shouts of victory to their God. Because that is the greatest celebration, Jesus Christ. It is not celebrate because I got healed. That is one celebration. Not celebrate because, oh, today, you know, I got a lot of money. Huh? Huh? Yes, yes, the save from the Egyptian. So the saving, that's the, 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 the main thing, the, the greatest thing to rejoice over is how we were saved from our sin. Yeah, okay? So from that, salvation is enough, all right, to burst forth because no one can save you. No one, no one. Somebody can heal you. The doctor can still heal you, all right? The financer can still give you money <laughs> if you, you know, put properly or whatever. But no one can save your spirit. No one can give you eternal life. Only Jesus Christ. So your greatest shot of victory, that should be your greatest joy. Each time they come, that's why we say we remember him. It's not even because I, I got a bonus or because I got, uh, uh, got healed from cancer or whatever. That is going to happen, right? But because you are saved, right? today we don't realize how wonderful is that salvation until the Holy Spirit come and show us. So when we come into his presence, it's all about Jesus. That really means what he has done. You are great, Lord. You know, you have mercy. Mercy means you don't have to go to hell. <laughs> right? You don't have to be punished. Besides all the other things that is coming. Right? When we are planted, then we start to drink water. And we start to realize other areas of our life will also become healed. Right? We'll become, be restored back. There will be even more celebration. Right? But the main celebration is what? Yes, salvation, right? Your victory. And that's why when we come together, this is the part. We start celebrating first from realizing our salvation. What a great gift God has given us, right? We rejoice, not because I still got a problem. I still got that sickness. I still got this uh, money problem or whatever problem. You forget. That's why all these problems distract you from what Jesus already done for you. All right? In the wells of salvation, the Bible, there's a verse there, Isaiah. All right? The well of salvation, those wells, right? water, inside salvation, first, your spirit being saved will flow to other areas to see the salvation in the other areas of your life. The restoration, right? the refreshing will come. Okay? But first, declare, because when we declare when we shout, when we dance today, whether uh, it's a physical meeting, right, where we can come into his presence and just let go and ladies follow Joan. <laughs> okay. Rejoice with your tambourine. Even if you are in the uh, Zoom, take a tambourine, you know, and rejoice, stand up in, the, in your Zoom, right? Don't worry, everybody not seeing you anymore. Okay. You are seeing God, all right? And Realizing how great he is, what he has done in us. When we rejoice and praise, God's presence come down. Okay? And then when his presence is, all the pleasures you attract. The world call it the law of attraction. Rubbish. All right? It is our God. Okay? The God that brings us the blessing. True blessing come from God alone. Because the blessings of God is without stress right brings no sorrow in the world it can come with the sacrifice of losing a loved one or losing your body losing your health but in god you gain everything blessing after blessing double and also right you are made rich and wealthy first in christ okay so that's why 
uh, build your own with the word. If you know, many people are depressed when they don't have money, right? <laughs> but that's why in the spirit, how to rejoice now? Say, I cannot rejoice like of this money problem, you know? But when you have this word of God that says what? It's at the cross, salvation, redemption. What is it? The verse. Second Corinthians 8, 9. <laughs> I always look at me blank, blank. <laughs> right? Second Corinthians 8, 9. 2 Corinthians 5.21, 5.17. This is why we are rejoicing that he who was rich became poor so that you through his poverty might become rich. So if you see that in your spirit, you're already rich. That's why you can rejoice. And that is in salvation. First, for the spirit. So it's not based on the five senses. Oh, <laughs> yeah. Because most people will only rejoice and think their victory after the five senses tell them everything is okay. But for us, we rejoice first from the spirit. And when we rejoice from the spirit, this is the real thing, right? Everything will flow. Suddenly, you go back, your account, okay, ready. <laughs> you see? So first, you need to know you are rich in the spirit. I think I said 1,000 times today, right? <laughs> okay, so getting clearer and clearer. All right, okay. So that is the sound of victory huh? so i love the uh, why why coming back into the jewish songs if you listen every day to this you will be celebrating and the more you celebrate god the more the blessings come right the more what the devil <laughs> go away <laughs> run from you okay they so in tears seeds and a harvest of joyful shouts that's why in the traditional church they don't shout don't even have music, all very quiet. Without Holy Spirit, man. You know? Then we say, oh, yeah, why the uh, so-called charismatic? Why so noisy, man? <laughs> it's not because the, it's, it's not the noise that bring the blessing. It is the shout because that's God's way, right? When your heart is overwhelmed or filled with power, you shout or not? <laughs> you shout, right? You scream. You strike lottery in first prize. <laughs> Which person strike lottery first prize and then don't shout when they come to tell you, you know, I just strike lottery first prize. <laughs> yeah, uh, Five million dollars. They got like that one. What happened? The person will come to you. Wow! Definitely will say, mommy! <laughs> you know what happened. Okay, guess they didn't buy it. Okay? But that's what happened, right? When you realize that, you know, Something wonderful has happened in your life. What's the most wonderful thing that happened in your life? Ah, Jesus Christ, right? Came into your life, saved you. So that's it. Deserve a shout. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So you can shout louder than the one who won the first prize, right? Yeah. Because they might go to hell without Jesus, right? But So that is why our bodies were created to express what is in our spirit. Right, and if we keep it all down, it cannot change. The what happened? Uh, the the fullness cannot come in. They weep as they go out carrying their seed to sow. They will return with joyful laughter, all right, and shouting with gladness as they bring back armloads of blessing and harvest overflowing. Okay, there will be more shouts, more blessings coming in. But the first shout is the shout of triumph of our Lord Jesus, triumphing over the devil and over death. And therefore, today we all have life. Okay? Today you are alive. Today, and that's reason, a very good reason to shout. The dead person want to shout also cannot shout already. <laughs> There's a verse that says, right? If you want to praise God but at the grave, too late already. You don't wait, right? Which dead person can get up and shout? While you are alive, while there's still breath in me, right? David said, while I still have breath, while I'm still breathing, let me praise the Lord. Okay, but the reason you know why already, right? And then you will be bringing arm loads. You can see each one of you carrying all the blessings, all right, of harvest. Sing, O oh barren that didn't bear. Break forth into singing. You're no more barren in the spirit, right? So every expression of victory or fruitfulness is about singing and shouting. 
Okay, so if you are very timid person, learn to uh, go under the anointing, like the Holy Spirit make you laugh first, <laughs> do the operation of your, uh, your throat <laughs> and your lungs first, put more air inside, right? And let that triumph shout come out. Because remember Jericho wall also came down, right? To the final shout. And they blow the shofar and the horn and all that, right? And then the last trumpet, you know, I think in heaven got a lot of trumpets. Don't have those uh, soft music ones. <laughs> More loud music. Okay. Trumpet blow is when you will hear, right? You, we are all his believers, will hear the trumpet blow, the last trumpet, and then rapture. <laughs> all go up. Okay? So if you didn't hear, <laughs> Yeah, yes, okay. Build your spiritual uh, uh spirit man, right? The, the trumpet will sound first, the angel will sound the trumpet, all with a shout of victory, all right? A sound of victory. There's also more uh, wonderful truths from the show and all that. Yeah, but today we cannot go into everything. Okay, so more when you hear the good news, right? The good news is telling you now you may be barren, look like no children, not many people or uh, not many blessings yet, or business project grow yet, or whatever, still sick or whatever in the five senses realm. When you shout the shout of victory, right, everything can change in the natural realm. All right, because you have also God's word inside. Where God said you will have more children. Amen. Daphne, both natural and spiritual than those who cannot bear. All right. You begin to declare it, begin to shout. So first see. The thing not yet happened, already happened. If you see you have more children, you're shouting about your mommy shop first. <laughs> oh, baby, come on, already twins, triplet. Okay. Ah, you, that time you cannot stop Catherine from uh, shouting, right? Okay. But you see it now first. Everything in the spiritual realm is conceived first in our heart, in our imagination. Then it will come forth. That's why we pray in tongues. All right. We pray in the spirit. You're praying all the things that are future that's going to happen. Because if we pray in the natural, we only see today. <laughs> today, this is what happened. When we pray in the Spirit, the Holy Spirit take us, take our tongue, that confess the wrong thing, all right, and begin to speak all, future. yes, the future blessings, the future prosperity, the future health, the future you, and the many children. So pray in tongues when you want to pray, when you speak. Uh, nonsense <laughs> or not sometimes it's not just nonsense it's just a limitation all right we are just speaking today okay today right this is what is going to happen or this is what i, I received no there is a future all right bigger one enlarge the place of the pen right so both spiritually enlarge our hearts okay as we read the word of god begin to see the multitudes all right the blessings that are coming you don't see uh, curse or see reduction <laughs> okay that is all in the natural realm in the spiritual realm god says never have any word god say you know especially in christ that he will reduce you <laughs> right that he will make you smaller that he will make you poorer no every word of god in the uh, in the redemption right tells you that god will multiply god will multiply your resources it's whether we see it or not by meditating, God will make you so strong and healthy. All right, Caleb. All right, stronger than normal. You are, when you are eighty, you are as strong as the young man. This is all the word of God that is life creative. So enlarge our heart, our tent to receive the creative word of God. God is always big or small. Yeah. Ah, so don't limit him with small mind. All right, let the mind grow. Let the heart grow. <clears throat> Fair not, lengthen the cords. A deep sense of holy awe. So back into X to the church today. X is a church today, okay? <laughs> Don't say X is in the Bible very long ago. The today means after Jesus. This is the real church that we follow, okay? All right? Not any church in this world. We follow the book of X. That was the most powerful uh, congregation of God after they got born again and they baptized in the Holy Spirit. A deep sense of holy or sweat over every all. All is an awesome God, powerful God. The apostles performed many miraculous signs and wonders. The supernatural was happening in their midst. All the believers were in fellowship with one 
in one body, they shared with one another whatever they had. There is a sharing. You know, sharing comes when there's no fear, <laughs> correct? If you fear of lack, you dare not fully share, right? We will hoard, okay? That's why there's no word as hoarding or saving in the Bible. It's always giving and sharing because God is the one who multiplies. So we see that is what happened in the fellowship, the first fellowship that was filled with the power of God. They shared whatever they had out of generosity. They sold, even sold the assets. They were not told to do it. Okay? They're not living by law and commandments anymore. Something happened in their hearts. This is the real birth, right? A real spiritual experience of born again, where something happened. The God's heart of God is a generous God. Begin to fill their hearts with generosity and they just did what is normal to them, right? To distribute, to sell whatever assets they have and distribute the proceeds to those who were in need among them. This is so powerful. And they followed a daily discipline of worship in the temple. Today, we only twice a week. <laughs> Theirs was daily, right? Daily, they were meeting up, whether in the temple courts or in one another's home. To for every meal, a celebration. So it's wonderful. You know, a meal, even in our culture, if you eat a meal and people's face are long and sad, <laughs> yeah, even your parents will school you, right? Yeah. So they have an idea, you know, of that actually from, from the Jews, right? From the, yeah, because it is the, the Jews spread to all, of, all parts of the world, right? And to the Chinese and all that. So it's like very pantang like that, you know? Ah, you bring all the bad luck, yeah. So where did they get all this? It's from the Jews. Because the Jews were taught to celebrate their, their Passover, the, the, where, where they were taken from the Egyptian, right? Uh, Say from the Egypts. The Passover was a meal of celebration. Today, we don't take communion with a long face. <laughs> like, very sad like that. It's a celebration. It's part of their main meal, but they took out from the main meal the, the part where they are uh, representing Jesus. Uh, for us, it's Jesus today, right? So when you share co communion, smile. <laughs> okay, it's not the end of the world. It is the beginning of new beginnings. It's a celebration of victory. The communion, the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, the blood and body of Christ speak of what? Victory, right? Speak of victory for us. Yeah, for us, for us. It's not just Jesus' victory. It's a victory for the new creation, for every one of us who partake of the communion. Okay, some of you, let's prepare your communion at home. If you are in Zoom, right, take together. It is a celebration of victory. When you strike $1 million, <laughs> you laugh, you shout, right? So when you look at the communion, you rejoice. It's a celebrate communion. We come together, celebrate, right? That today, Jesus has defeated the devil, right? We are now new creation. You have life in you. So those who do communion, uh, and see the celebration, okay? Don't lead everyone into confession of sin, <laughs> or condemnation, or feeling bad for Jesus. No, Jesus died, and then we celebrate, bring everyone into understanding that when you partake communion, it's a time to celebrate, okay? The resurrection, the death and resurrection of our Lord Jesus, that the, only His blood can cleanse our evil conscience. Only his blood can set us free. Which prisoner come out from prison is not happy. <laughs> Celebrate, right? And the family members will say, okay, now you come out of prison. Long time didn't eat chili fish. <laughs> so come, come to my place. I cook chili fish for you, right? So it's a celebration. Freedom is a celebration. Yeah, we celebrate our freedom in Christ. Okay, daily they met together celebrating communion, eating, celebration, exuberant, joyful, praising God. They shared meals together. Ah, for us, come for physical meeting. <laughs> you have meal, okay? Wonderful, uh, talented chef. But then Holy Spirit anointed one, all right? Both husband and wife. When one give the main course, the other one give the dessert. <laughs> so you will be full. Celebrate, okay? Enjoy also the meal with us for our physical 
4D, all right? They shared meals together with joyful hearts and tender humility. No fear of lack because God will continue to multiply and bless. All right. They were continually filled with the praises of God, to God, enjoying, right? Enjoy. Life is to be enjoyed, not the way the world thinks. Without God, there's no enjoyment. <laughs> without Jesus Christ, there's only a fear of eternal, eternal damnation. But with God, right, we can enjoy this life on this earth until, until the day comes, rapture comes, which is very soon, where we behold him who died for us, you know, the, the lover of our soul. Enjoy life, enjoying the favor of all the people. People will just want to come and bless you. People you may not know, like uh, uh, Janice not here anymore, right? People who don't know pay for their, <laughs> their, their, what, their wedding ring or whatever. The favor of God is on you. All right? Suddenly, people just come to bless you. People you know, people you don't know. Sent by God. Angels. This is a supernatural realm. All right? Your boss begin to give you more <laughs> than you deserve. Oh, any area, I don't know. God is without limit. Only God knows. Right? Your business prosper, your work, your job, every, all your environment, your plan begin to grow faster than normal. <laughs> normal take one year. You know, yours in six months grow already. Got fruit already. Favor of God. And then what happened? The Lord kept adding their number daily those who were coming to life, not death, okay? People come in, they see life, right? See growth, see blessing, right? Because this, our God, it's the Chinese God of prosperity. <laughs> Ours is, yeah, the real one, okay? Who is here to bless and all our blessing come because of Jesus, right? Dying on the cross for us. So the greatest joy for God will be to see his children blessed because Jesus died for that. Yeah, his purpose was to, at the end, we can be blessed. All right, spirit, soul, and body. So then when your hearts are so full of victory and you know who your God is, like the Exodus in uh, Moses and Miriam, what did they say? I go and tell, I'm telling the world this kind of God that I have. That's what happened. The gospel spread from Acts in the book of Acts, to the uttermost parts of the world, right? That's where your verse come from. First in, where? Jerusalem. Yeah, Jerusalem was when the Holy Spirit came down and they got born again. So every place that have the Holy Spirit come down, people get born again, the gospel will spread because the people will know, this is the kind of God I have. Big God, generous God, loving God, prosperous God. Yeah, and then you will want to Tell the world. <laughs> tell the world, right? If you have never tell anyone, okay, when you know who your God is and experience him, you will tell the world. Amen. Hallelujah. So let God add, okay? Let God add to the church, right? Those who are coming to life being saved, right? Grow and experience the wonderful goodness of God. Amen. Speed up very fast. Okay, celebration of victory. 